What are we doing? We're linked up, right? Let's move forward. Okay, let's turn. Okay, try to turn without me. <laughs> Is she helping me? Is she helping me? She needs to be my counterpart. Okay, okay. We have a dog that has this ball that I want to just rip apart. <laughs> it squeaks. And it stops squeaking, and they and I don't like it so much. They blame me for taking the squeaky up, squeaker thing out. I did not, but I fixed it after. But, okay, when I throw this ball, she I don't care where she's at. She comes back and brings it back. Now, I throw it again. She catches it and brings it back. Okay. When, okay, if I was playing catch with Manny, and I threw something, and he catches it, throws it back. Okay, we got to keep this ball up. If I'm throwing this ball and he's not there, it's gonna keep going. It drops, drop the ball. So you can, well, you can sit down. She's like, yep. No, okay. So Ruby, hurt the dog, she she needs this ball. I hold it from her and she starts crying and crying and crying and she her her whole mouth even like, and she does something weird and I'm like. My mom's like, give her her ball. I'm like, no. She will walk around this ball with, with this ball in her mouth, tongue hanging to the side, so happy. And she plays with it. And you know what? She's, she's a little dog. She's an inside dog. She's a little weenie dog. This is her, her playmate. It's a ball. No matter how we look at it, this is her company. No, my mom's there. Don't get me wrong, this dog isn't like super lonely. But you know what? The, <laughs> the way she loves this ball, as as ridiculous as it seems and as annoying as it is, the way she loves this ball, that's a helpmate to her. She moves forward with it. I'm using this ridiculous example to draw a picture of what seems ridiculous to some people is the world to others. And I know that's like one of those like, I'm going to post that quote on something. But it is. This ball makes her day. She cries and she whines without it. And she genuinely misses it. When I'm trying to move this way and Juliana's moving that way, that is not a help me. <laughs> That's somebody who's bringing a problem to a situation, right? We're warring against stuff. So let's look at it this way. Here we are. I'm going to pray for something. Lord, I, I know that you have somebody for me. Father, we bring him soon. Did, were we created to be alone? No, we, we, have, we have a helpmate somewhere, right? But guess what? Did he already give it to us? Does he already have that? When we start praying for things that we already have, we're warring against what God's already trying to do. And when we're praying for stuff that's already been promised to us, we never get to have the joy of getting the answer. It's already been done. Oh, Lord, I call, I need peace. Father, give me peace. What? I need patience. Oh, my gosh, we have it. Get under the open heaven. Be aware of the Spirit on you. We need to stop praying for what's already been given to us. It's in the thing called the Bible. And guess what? We find out even more in relationship with him because he speaks to us. He speaks to us and he tells us things. He tells us what we want to hear. He tells us things we don't want to hear. And you know what? The word of God is available. I can't hear him. Oh, my gosh. It's so hard. God never talks to me. But guess what? He's speaking all the time. All the time. And I always tell the girls, um, know the youth and some of the adults, the young adults, it's just hard to get into the presence. Put praise and worship music on. Put that on because you know what? That's the easiest way to get into the presence of the Lord. Through worship, through song. You know, it, it is. That's why we opened up with praise and worship. We all come in. We don't know what we're expecting in here. But once we, we lift our voices and our hands in, in one accord, one voice, we enter into his presence and we invite him in. And then what? We all become aware of the Spirit on us. And guess what happens? We're all under this open heaven. And what's ours? 
everything because what the kingdom is at hand so when we when we're aware of the spirit of god on us the holy spirit when we walk constantly aware we cast a shadow of power we cast a shadow of healing we cast a shadow of being made whole and we walk in good cheer let's talk about the woman who was caught in the act of adultery who was brought before jesus and said Look what she did. We caught her in the very act. See what you got to, what do we have to say now, Jesus? Come on. What's going on now? We all know the story. He's right in the sand, doing his thing. She's standing there. She was caught in the act. So this chick wasn't wearing anything. She is standing there, naked in shame. Yes, and everything. And all her shame. Oh my gosh. Can you imagine? Put yourself in that position right now. Let's take, let's close our eyes. And he was preaching to a bunch of people. And these people caught her in the act, dragged her out there. What now? And Jesus said, what? Let who's without sin cast the first stone. Oh, I'm sorry, I can't do that. Everybody kind of walked away like, oh, I'm still going to cast a stone, right? Some of us do that anyway. Can't do it, but we're going to. You know what he said? Go and sin no more. What happened at that moment? She was clothed in redemption. She was clothed in, in, in his glory. And what did she do? She went, she walked. She didn't have all of a sudden like clothing on. like <laughs> No, she walked whole. She had to walk away from there. But guess what? She stood face to face with Jesus. And she was in the presence of the Holy Spirit, and she received it, and she became aware of the power on her now. And she walked whole. She walked away whole. And you know what? Do you think she was walking away like this? Like, no. You know what? I'm going to get clothes when I get back to the area. I need to get them. But you know what? She was covered. Nobody saw her shame. Nobody saw her nakedness, because guess what? It didn't exist anymore. She walked with his covering. She was covered by his glory. And she was made whole. You think she was like, let me step out of this open heaven for a minute. Oh, no. No, she stayed because you know what? That's what kept her whole. That's what kept the shame out. She was aware of it when she was walking. Go and sin no more. Guess what? Oh, I'm a sinner. I can't do it. You've been made whole. Go and sin no more. Did that come out of Jesus' mouth? Then, did it already happen? How many times did he say that? Go and sin no more. It already happened. It was already spoken into existence. We have the option of going and sinning no more. Are we going to go and sin no more? Or are we going to go and step out of the open heaven and cry about how it's closed? And cry about that when I walk, nothing happens. I don't walk in signs and wonders. I don't walk in miracles. Well, get under the open heaven and get your hands on the kingdom. Because the kingdom is at hand and we are under an open heaven. Not once in the Bible did it say they closed back up. It never said the heavens closed back up. And that was the end of the story. We win at the end. Because we are constantly under this open heaven. We walk in victory. Thank you. We walk in victory. So, there, okay, when we sing Shout Unto God, it's a song by Hillsong United. The enemy's been defeated. Death couldn't hold you down. Going to lift our voice in victory. Make your praises loud, is that what it says? And it says, and it says it over and over and over. Gosh, that song is so amazing. Because you know what? We're declaring the victory. We're shouting unto God. At that moment, we're rejoicing under this open heaven. And the kingdom is at hand. Oh, I just feel the presence so much at church. I love it when I'm there. Guess what? Go home and take it with you. Take it with you everywhere you go. In the grocery store. I went to a place that you really don't take glory in with you. And at the end of the night, two people gave their lives back to the Lord.